Hi guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about 10 dupes for luxury makeup products that I have found for a much more affordable price. The majority of these products are drugstore, but even in the case where I have had to kind of tip into a higher than drugstore priced product, you're still going to see significant savings versus these very expensive luxury makeup products. I'm actually wearing this side of my face as the high end and luxury side and this side of my face as the affordable dupe side and to be honest i can't even tell the difference super close up here with a mirror in front of me so we're going to be swatching all of these products talking about formulas and then demoing these on my face so you can actually see how they apply so let's go ahead and get into these 10 dupes okay so the first dupe i have for you is actually from first aid beauty this is their coconut skin smoothie priming moisturizer i have a travel size here i love this so much especially for travel it is hydrating and lightly glowy it's just that extra shot of lightweight moisture that i feel like my skin needs it makes my skin look radiant and brightened but like i said sometimes i feel like there's some illuminating bases that may make your skin look glowier but haven't really done much for hydration this i think gives a nice subtle glow plus that level of hydration i think it's a beautiful beautiful product the dupe that i have for you guys is actually from number seven and so this is their number seven skin illuminator um, this product has really similar glow factor and really similar hydration factor and I went through and looked at the ingredients kind of side by side and although none of the formulas I'm going to talk about today are like one for one dupes there are definitely some similarities between these two formulas go ahead and put this on so you can see this in real life so we're going to do this side high end and this side um, on the affordable side and we're just going to Apply some all over the face. It has a really nice sort of soft, just fresh scent to it. Nothing too overpowering. Not a huge person. I'm not somebody who wants like a ton of scent in my products. So there you can see I'm just getting a really nice glow on this side of my face versus this side. My skin definitely appreciated that moisture, kind of sucked it all up in. So then let's go in with the number seven illuminating product on this side. And it's a very similar consistency. It's very similar in terms of, like I said, hydration, how it smooths on the skin, in terms of the amount of glow that it gives. It gives glow without being, in my opinion, too much glow. And so there you can see kind of side by side, I feel like I'm getting the same level of glow, the same level of hydration. So the only reason I wouldn't completely displace the coconut primer with this primer is quite frankly that this is coming in a one fluid ounce size and this is coming in a 0.75 ounce size. And so I really need this kind of size to go um, in travel bags. I don't know as if I wanna take this. If you are just interested in this product and wanted something at a more affordable price, this is your dupe. The next dupe I have for you guys is actually a foundation dupe. This is the Westman Atelier Vital Skin Foundation. I have the shade Zero. Um, Atelier Zero. This is a product that has a decent amount of oils in it as well as some waxes in order to kind of bind those oils and bring them together. It is a very glowy, natural, dewy skin foundation. However, because of those ingredients, the first time I used this, I kind of swiped it on my face and then used my sponge, which is what I would usually reach for. And what I found was that it wasn't moving around. And what I realized was that this was a product that was going to apply better with a brush. You could probably use your fingers as well, but for my purposes, I like to load a brush and then apply it on my face. I do very much enjoy this. It's a very soft, emollient feeling foundation. The dupe that I feel like is pretty, dupes this pretty well in terms of how it feels and looks on the skin is actually from Makeup Revolution. And this is their um, Fast Base Stick Concealer. I have the shade F2 in this. This is a similar formula in the sense that it uses some oils and some synthetic oils as opposed to like mineral oil or castor seed oil or things like that inside of here as long, along with some um, waxes. So it's a very similar type formula in the sense that it is taking some oil and oil-like ingredients, combining it with waxes. And this is also a very soft, 
very emollient type formula that I also found works better with a brush. For today, I'm gonna to be using a Sigma F80 Air. This is a flat top kabuki, but it is a more of a stippling brush. It's still dense enough that it does well with foundation, but it gives a little bit of a lighter coverage than a full like flat top kabuki, super dense brush. So we'll put the Westman Atelier on this side. And what I do, like I said, is just kind of run my, run the stick over the brush, kind of load up the brush like so. And then I'll start in my cheek area and start to blend this out. This is a product that I think is going to give you probably light medium coverage. You might be able to build I'm just gonna to continue to load up my brush a little bit here. Um, you might be able to build up to medium coverage, but because of the type of formula it is, and because of the oils and things in there, if you get a really heavy layer on your face, it really just does not look flattering. When you use a little bit less of an amount and just kind of blend out slowly, it is really flattering, really skin-like, and in that respect, I really like it. I also find this one is very quick and easy to put on with a brush. It just doesn't take a whole lot of time to get a nice even layer across your face. So there is one layer on. You can see it's kind of evened out my skin. It looks really glowy. It's not settling or doing anything weird in my pores. It looks great on my chin, even where I've got some dryness. Um, blended very easily, nicely smoothing. So I'm just going to clean this brush real fast and then we'll come back and do the Makeup Revolution version. All right, so brush is clean. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing with the Makeup Revolution stick one. We're just going to load up the brush. And the other reason I like doing it this way is because these products are so emollient, if you roll up a ton, it actually will smear um, this product around. Like if you zoom in here, you can see how soft of a product this is. The Westman Atelier product is not quite as soft as this one, but both of them, if you go too high, will definitely sort of smoosh the product in the tube. This one, because it is a little bit more emollient than even the Westman Atelier, will pick up more on the brush right out of the gate. As you can see, it's just picking up a lot more product, which is fine. I mean, it just makes blending it out even a little faster, in my opinion, because your brush has more on it. So there is the Makeup Revolution side, giving me sort of light medium coverage, still very glowy. And there is the Westman Atelier side. I really feel like as I look at my skin super close up in this mirror here, I really truly cannot tell the difference between one side or the other. They are super similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this kind of start to set on its own a little bit before we uh, talk about the powder dupe. So let's go ahead and talk about the two eyeshadow dupes that I have for you. All right, so we're bouncing back in time a little bit before I'd put anything on my face because I have two eyeshadows that I wanted to demo in today's video. And so I figured I would put one on first, show you how it applied, talk about it, and then take it off. So the first eyeshadow I want to uh, talk about is from Chantikai. Um, this is one of their mermaid eye colors and it's in the shade Hematite, which is this really pretty sort of cool toned, murky purpley taupe color. This is a very pigmented formula. It's gonna give you a nice sort of satin, slightly leaning metallic shade, but more in that sort of satin metallic sort of finish. Um, I did find some shades that I think are fairly comparable to this. I think the closest one I found is actually from Anastasia, and this is the shade uh, Chocolate Crumble. And so this is the one I'm gonna demo on my eyes today, but I did also wanna show you a secondary shade um, from Makeup Geek, which is the shade Mesmerized. And the, this is also very, very similar. And then the third shade that I wanted to recommend, and I don't think I swatched this one close up, so I'm gonna show you show these um, here to you real fast, is actually in the BH Cosmetics Royal Affairs palette. I was, when I was doing dupes, I was going in and I was looking in my palettes as well, because a lot of you guys may own some of these palettes and a dupe doesn't have to be in a single shadow form. It could be inside of a palette you already own. So there are all four of them swatched. So so this shade here is the one from Chantikai. This one is Chocolate Crumble by Anastasia. This is Makeup Geek Mesmerized. And then this last shade is the one in the BH Cosmetics palette that I will show you here. 
in just a second. The shade in particular I'm talking about here is in the first row and it's the shade uh, Lord here in the middle. So I got you nicely zoomed in here. I am gonna be using the same brush on both eyes like I've been doing for the rest of my face. So this is going to be the high end side and this is gonna be the dupe side. I'm just loading up a flat shader brush from Wayne Goss. This is discontinued once 18, but any flat shader brush will work. And I have gone ahead and primed my eyelids with a little bit of Urban Decay Primer Potion on both sides. And I have not set that. So I'm just gonna kinda pat and apply this shadow. And then I will probably take a clean blending brush and just blend out the edges because I do think this is the type of shade that works really well as just an all over lid shade, kind of one and done. And just taking a clean blending brush, no product on there and blending out the edges. This takes two seconds to do and looks like you've kind of done a really a pretty smoky eye in like, like I said, in one shade. So there is the shade from Chantecai. Cleaned my brush off. Um, we're gonna go in with the shade Chocolate Crumble from Anastasia on the dupe side. And then same brush just cleaned off as again as well. We'll blend out the edges. As you can see, it's it's a slightly different undertone. Like it might be a little bit deeper and smokier on the Chantecaille side, but in general, these two shades are so similar to one another that I just don't feel like you can really notice a huge difference when you are looking straight on and it definitely gives you a similar effect. And like I said, if you have that uh, BH Cosmetics Royal Affairs palette, you're gonna get a very, very similar look uh, to this as well using the shade Lord. So the next eye product is another one from Shantakai. Um, this is another one that I picked up over the holidays. This is an interesting formula in the sense that it is a baked gelée texture because of this baked gelée texture, it actually is allowing a decent amount of a micro glitter to go in here. So it's not even just like a shimmer or metallic formula. This actually has a micro glitter going through it that gives it a lot of dimension, but also allows it to stick to your eyes. So a couple of dupes, and the one I'm gonna demo on my eyes today is a shade from Anastasia. This is uh, Truffle Glitter. A similar shade that's a little lighter, that's more of a metallic texture is one from a Sydney Grace um, Autumn's Rain palette in the shade Wondrous Night. This is and then another formula that's very, very similar in the sense that it gives you a slightly metallic base with a lot of glitter in it is actually the Super Shock formula in their Ultra Glitter formula um, from ColourPop. This is the shade Far Side. And then I did find a shadow in a palette that has a nice metallic base that has enough binding to it that they were able to effectively, in my opinion, add some micro glitter. And that's in the Dominique's Cosmetics, the Latte palette, her first one. It's one of my favorite shades, which is this one here down on the end called Espresso. But I wanted to call out all of those formulas because there's something very unique about a metallic shadow that actually has a decent amount of micro shimmer running through it. As I went through all of my palettes and all of my singles, I was just not finding that kind of combination very often at all. Up first is the Chantecaille Elephant Shade, and I'm just using a clean Wayne Goss number 18 flat shader brush. So as you can hopefully see there, this is a nice soft taupe, but it has a ton of sort of gold and silver, I would say, micro glitter running through it, and it really does a beautiful job of catching the light. And now we're gonna go in with Anastasia Truffle Glitter. All right, so here are the two shades side by side. Both of these formulas have a nice metallic base to them. Both of these formulas have a nice amount of micro shimmer. I do feel like I'm getting more micro shimmer sort of glitter particles showing up on my eye on the Chantecaille side. But in general, I think these shades are incredibly close to one another. And I do feel like that if you're looking for that sort of glitter formula with um, a nice metallic base and sort of this taupey color, you definitely could pick up that Anastasia single and be quite happy with it. But if you wanna just play around with a formula that has um, a gl strong glitter presence in it that adheres well to the eyes, the ultra glitters from ColourPop and their Super Shock formula, as well as the color in the Dominique Cosmetics Latte palette, I think are gonna give you a similar 
effect. All right, so I have gone ahead and added some mascara on my upper lashes and I added a little bit to my brows and I also put on some Glossier Stretch Concealer underneath both eyes, just a little bit to kind of even things out. I don't have a concealer dupe that we're gonna be talking about today. In terms of powder, um, this is one you may have seen me talk about before when I did a video on sort of ranking my Charlotte Tilbury products from sort of favorite to least favorite. And I tried to give some dupes when I found them inside of that video as well. I will link that down below if you wanna see kind of a whole Charlotte Tilbury dupes video. But um, one of the products that I 100% stand by and wanted to bring up again in this video is a dupe for her Airbrush Flawless finish powder. I have the shade one and this has gotten some really good love for me. I do feel like it's nicely smoothing. I do feel like it's not so drying that I feel like I am getting all the moisture sucked out of my face when I put it on. It doesn't look heavy or cakey or makeup-y, which is one of the things I also look to avoid with face powders. Product that I think is the closest dupe is actually from e.l.f. This is part of their Beautifully Bare line. It is their finishing powder. It also has a hint of a tint to it, but it's not super high coverage, similar to the Charlotte Tilbury. They actually have fairly similar ingredients in here. This is a talc based product. It has talc number one in both of them, but they're both using mica. They're both using silica. They're both using dimethicone. They're both using a uh, stearate ingredient. So the zinc stearate or a magnesium stearate. It's going to give very similar effect from everything I have read. And they're both including in lower down in our list, some forms of even oil. So I actually find the texture, the finish and everything about these formulas to look and feel very similar on the skin. So I think what I wanna do is set my under eyes first. And to do that, I'm going to use my Real Technique setting brush. I'm gonna pick up some of the Charlotte Tilbury product. I'm gonna tap it off because I don't want a ton. I'm gonna use that to set underneath my eyes here on this side. And I do like this powder because I feel like I can use it both on my face and under my eyes. And that is not something I think I can do with many products. I'm just gonna clean off that little same brush. And then on the other side, we're gonna go into the e.l.f. powder and put this also underneath my eyes. And because it has the silica, you're getting the smoothing factor. Because you're using ingredients like the dimethicones and the stearates, you're getting a smoother finish and the oils in there are helping to make this not a super drying product either. So that is what it looks like underneath both of my eyes. Honestly, I can't tell a difference at all. Foundation is set down, but it's still lightly tacky. And because I'm gonna be using some powder products on the rest of my face, I definitely wanna make sure that my face is set. So I am just loading up a fluffy brush. This is an old one from Sonia Kashik, but it's lightly fluffy. Um, and I always tap off the powder because I never want too, too much. And we're just gonna go over skin with this. I do think this is a really beautiful finishing powder. So that is sort of nicely smoothed, gotten rid of some of that tackiness. Same thing, pick it up on here, tap it off, pounce a little on my hand, and then go lightly over my face. So there is the elf side. And here is the Charlotte Tilbury side. Super close up in my mirror, guys. I can't tell a difference between one side of my face and the other. Moving on, let's talk bronzer. Um, this is a fantastic product from Charlotte Tilbury that I've loved for years. This is her film star Bronze and Glow. I have talked about how much I love, especially this bronzer side, because it's just... It's a little bit more neutral to cool tone leaning, more neutral, I wouldn't say this is cool toned, neutral leaning, and as a result, it doesn't look too warm on my skin. It also has a lovely satin texture. The dupe that I have is from Flower Beauty. This is her Heat Wave Bronzer. This one looks very cool toned, but it actually has a little bit more of a neutral undertone when you actually get into the product. It's a very it's very interesting that when you kind of swatch it, you're getting the more, you're seeing the more neutral um, but then if you were to take a tissue, kind of wipe off the surface, it goes back to looking very cool toned. But the color undertone of this, as well as the finish is satin, and I think incredibly similar to the Charlotte Tilbury. So I'm just gonna use a Wayne Goss number 11 brush, and I'm gonna pick up some product here, 
tap it off a little bit in my hand and then we'll go in on my cheeks. Take that up the temple. A little bit on the forehead. And this is just one of those powders that I feel like you cannot mess up. It just blends like a dream. It's not too heavy, it's not too pigmented, but I've used this on people far tanner than me as well as actually lighter than me and it still seems to work on them. And then they do have a deeper version of this as well. So there's sort of the bronze side of my face. Like I said, really subtle, really pretty, not too heavy, nice satin finish. Now let's go in with the flower side and then come on this side about these bronzer or either one of these bronzers being too heavy being too pigmented just not working for my skin tone so there are the two sides of my face i just don't feel like you can tell a difference for undertone and also the texture being that sort of satin finish so there is charlotte tilbury and there is flower and, and you can really tell that they are similar when you get up on my forehead because you really can't tell the difference between the two either in texture or color as they kind of blend together in the middle of my forehead. So I love this bronzer and I do think that this is a fantastic dupe if you've been wanting to try the undertone as well as a similar formula to the Charlotte Tilbury. Give this one a whirl, I don't think you'll be disappointed. In terms of blush, we have to do my favorite Marc Jacobs blush. This is the shade Flesh and Fantasy. Um, you've got sort of a satin texture down here into something a little bit more glowy, but when you blend it all together, you're getting a sort of mauve -y, neutral shade that is just so flattering and works on absolutely every possible, with every makeup look possible in my opinion. The dupe that I have for you guys is actually one that was in my Project Pan last year. And I think I now realize why I love this blush so much. So this is from e.l.f. This is one of their little studio singles. It's like, I think three bucks. This is the shade um, Mellow Mauve. It's gotten a ton of love from me. But when you blur the Marc Jacobs one all together and then um, put that on one cheek and then put this on the other, I don't think you can tell a difference. Both have a nice satin texture to them. So let's start with the Marc Jacobs. I'm just gonna kind of pounce my brush all over this palette. Do what I usually do, tap off a little in my hand, and then we'll go in on this cheek. And like you can see, it's just, it's slightly mauve -y, it's slightly pink, it's not too intense, blends like a dream, it's that gorgeous satin texture, such a pretty blush, like such a pretty blush. Let's go into the e.l.f. side, same thing, we're just gonna run our brush around on it, tap a little off, and then go in over on this side, so there you go, you've got the sort of elf neutrally pinky moth side going over here, and then you've got a very similar undertone going on over here from the Marc Jacobs. You've got the same satin texture. Once again, I'm looking straight in the camera, super close up at a mirror right in front of me, and I can't tell the difference between either side of my face at this point. In terms of highlighter, um, I wanted to offer up a dupe to the RMS Beauty Living Luminizer. Um, I do really enjoy this product quite a bit. It's one of those ones that's gonna give you sort of a wet, glossy look. It doesn't set down completely, so it's still gonna be slightly tacky, but I feel like what you get as a result is something that is very dewy, very glass skin, very glossy. It's um, This is an interesting formula because it's a combination of a couple of oils along with a couple different kinds of waxes to kind of bind it together, and then some mica to add a little bit more of a glow inside of it. So the dupe that I wanted to offer up is from Flower Beauty. This is their Day Glow Highlighting Glaze. This does come in two shades. I have the lighter shade, which is stunner and this has a very similar texture to it this has a few more i would consider to be synthetic ingredients in it the rms one is really trying to be as clean as possible this one is using some synthetic oils as opposed to oils like castor seed and coconut which is what's in the rms one but it's, it's a similar formulation in the sense that it's using oils and waxes to kind of build this very lightweight glassy skin look to your cheek so how i like to apply products like this is to actually pick some up with my finger and then because this is oil based i do feel like your finger works best to kind of blend these out But I do find too that this is not one, because I'm applying it with my finger, I think too, it's not one that is gonna like, it's not messing with my powder, I guess is what I would say. You would think that going over top of this 
or using this on top of powder would be bad news bears, but it's really, really not. And what you're getting is just this glassy, wet look sort of cheek, if you can see that there. Like, I just think that makes your skin look so healthy and so dewy. I mean, you can see the difference between this side, which is a little bit more satin without that gloss, and then this side that's now reflecting that beautiful light, um, but it's translucent. It just makes my skin look glowy as opposed to like, oh, you've got a bunch of highlighter on. Similar formula, I'm gonna use the same ring finger, just swirl and pick some of this up and start to press it into my cheeks and build up intensity where I want it. So there is that sort of same wet, glossy look going for the flower side. And like I said, this glossy skin look is like definitely what I've been into for, gosh, probably the last maybe six months. And so I love being able to find a product that I think is comparable to the look and feel that you're seeing from a lot of higher end products from Flower. Flower has done a really nice job, in my opinion, of launching some really fantastic products in the last year. All right, so our last two products are lip products. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually put one on half this side and the other on this side. So you can truly see them side by side on my lips. And the two lipstick dupes I have are two new dupes for Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. The first one we're gonna dupe is her newest lipstick line, which is um, the shade JK Magic, which is this really beautiful nude shade. I absolutely love this. This is a cream formula, gorgeous, gorgeous sort of peachy nude with a little bit of depth to it, not super sort of wash you out color. And then the shade that is actually the closest that I have found is from Milani. This is part of their matte line. This one has uh, more of a soft demi matte finish, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury is a little bit more hydrating and cream formula, but I actually think both formulas are really comfortable and I enjoy both of them. Let's go ahead and apply Charlotte first. And then we'll put the Milani on. So I think the biggest differences are definitely the matte versus um, cream side. The cream is a coming off a little bit lighter because you're picking up a little bit of that light and it's reflecting back at you. Just gonna put a little bit of a clear balm on this side. So now we have a similar sort of finish and you can see now they're looking incredibly similar to one another. I don't feel like if I walked up to you in public with this on, you would realize that I had two different shades of lipstick on. I think the Milani one might be just a hint deeper, but it's definitely the same undertone and like pretty much spot on dupes for one another. All right, so the next lip dupe I have is from her Matte Revolution line. This is the shade Walk of Shame, which is a beautiful sort of mid-toned, rosy, brick red color. Not super red, not super rose. It's got a really lovely undertone to it. The dupe I have is actually from Catrice. This is part of their Ultimate Matte Lipstick line. This is shade 90, Exotic Nude. And this is also a very lovely matte formula. It's got a nice slip to it. it feels really comfortable on the lips while still giving that sort of demi matte finish to it. So here's Charlotte Tilbury's Walk of Shame. And then here's Catrice Exotic Nude. So there are the two lipsticks side by side. The only thing I can say is I definitely think the Catrice side might be just a hint even more pigmented than the Charlotte Tilbury, but the undertone is like spot on to one another. The color is, or the finish is very, very similar. It's that soft demi matte. You're not getting a lot of shine kicking back. Curious about um, a nice comfortable matte formula in this shade. I definitely feel like Catrice Exotic Nude is going to be a great way for you to demo that shade at a much more affordable affordable price. All right, guys, so that wraps us up for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this way of demoing as well as swatching different dupes. You can see them side by side in action on my face. Definitely intend to be doing more of this on my channel. I'm working on sort of my next collection of dupes now, and then we'll be looking for every light crude purchase I make in the future to be finding closest dupes and coming back here. So this is part of reoccurring content here on my channel. So if you like this type of content, make sure you're subscribed. Videos like this will be coming out on my 
channel on a regular basis. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. Look forward to chatting with you down in the comments. Bye.